Welcome, friends. We're so glad that you're able to join us from Trinity Lutheran Church in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Uh, this is a wonderful day. We get to uh, have our word from Pastor Tom, our new uh, associate pastor in children, youth, and family. So we're looking forward to that. Hey, the other thing we have today is communion. We're going to do online communion today. So if you can get some bread and wine or some um, crackers and some juice or, or some way that you can celebrate uh, the sacrament with us, you can go right ahead to, and do that. We, in our uh, constant contact this week, we sent a uh, little uh, resource home for you that could help you with how you want to set up uh, home communion yourself. So please check that out as well. And thank you for all the ways that you guys, uh, this community continues to support the ministry of Trinity. And we're thankful for that. And uh, we've got folks who are still mailing in their, their gifts. And of course, there's the web page. But of course, as I said last week, you can just dial uh, 844 405 0424. If you text that number, uh, you'll be able to set up text to give, and that is a really convenient way to, to give. You just put in your information. The second time you go back to it, you uh, text 844-405-0424, and you can just put in the amount and hit send, and it does it uh, without you having to re-enter any of the other information. So if that's a helpful resource for you, please go ahead with that. Uh, and then, of course, for those folks who don't have online access, we have our new phone in worship service and uh, you can call 715-972-1314 again 715-972-1314 and you can set it up for your loved one who uh, may not have internet uh, you can set it up that it will actually call them and they can join in the worship service by phone and if you're interested in it if you're traveling or something you can call that number and listen anytime during the week so starting at 9 a.m sunday morning the worship service for that week will be on there so lots of other things check out your constant contact if you have any need for anything please call me directly, Pastor Patrick or Pastor Tom. Uh, we are preparing our hearts and our minds for the sacrament of Holy Communion today, so I invite you to join me in a confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the, the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Please take a moment for silence and self-reflection. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We've not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join us in our opening hymn, Lord, whose love and humble service. Lord, whose 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Feast of victory for our God. 
Let us pray. Glorious God, your generosity waters the world with goodness, and you cover creation with abundance. Awaken in us a hunger for the food that satisfies both body and spirit. And with this food, fill all the starving world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now, may God's peace be with you always and also with you. Please share with one another a sign of God's peace.
Isaiah chapter 55, verses 1 through 5. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come by the waters, and you have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money which does not bread and your labor which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good. And delight yourselves in rich food, incline your ear, and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make you an everlasting covenant. My steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples. I will you to the commanders of the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you, you do not know. And nations that you do not know, you shall run to you. Because the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Word of God, word of life. Hey kids out there. Why don't you come on down closer to the screen for our children's message here this morning. Well, if you don't know who I am, I'm Pastor Tom. I am your new associate pastor for children, youth, and family ministries here at Trinity Lutheran Church. So today I wanted to talk about one word that really stuck out to me in our gospel reading, and that word is compassion. Do you know what the word compassion means? If you do or you have a guess, why don't you share that with somebody right now? Well, I had to Google search it to get more of a definitive answer, a, a good answer. I think of compassion more as this feeling of being moved for somebody. And that is right. But compassion is being moved because of someone's tough situation. It means you feel sorry for them. You feel empathy for them. You feel for someone who's going, having a hard time, going through some rough stuff. And so that got me wondering, if Jesus had compassion for this crowd of people, who might Jesus tell all of us to have compassion for here today? Who do you think? I'm sure Jesus could tell us to have compassion for any number of people. But I think the way in which we live out compassion for one another can be just as important as just feeling it. And I think the biggest way we can do that right now is to wear these masks. Jesus uh, tells us to, or he has compassion, he has feelings for people and wants to help them. And I think masks are ways that we can have compassion for others. Now, we all probably are wearing masks in some form or another. You all are getting ready for school. And if you're doing in-person school, you'll need to wear a mask. And this is a way in which we can have compassion for one another by keeping our aerosols within here, within the mask, so we're not spreading all of our germs and aerosols from our, from our breath and from our voices out into the world. It's kind of tough, right? It's kind of hard to have compassion for others when we ourselves are kind of, what do I want to say here? were disadvantaged because of it. Does anyone really want to wear a mask? Probably not. On Halloween, maybe, but not really on August 2nd, 2020, do we want to wear a mask? But we do so because we have compassion for others, because we love our neighbors. So this week, make sure you wear your mask and share God's love by having compassion for others. Our gospel comes from Matthew 13. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. 
And all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace, peace, and mercy are yours in the triune God. Amen. Over the past few weeks, we have been reading some of Jesus' most famed passages and teachings from throughout the Bible. Last week, we heard about the parable, or the multiple parables of the kingdom of heaven, including the parable of the mustard seed. We probably all know that one. The week before, we heard the parable of the fields, and even before that, the parable of the sower. It's almost like this summer is tracing Jesus' greatest hits from the Gospel of Matthew. This week is no different. We've probably all heard this Gospel passage before. It's the, the miracle of Jesus feeding the 5,000 plus women and children. But here's the thing. I think we all know this passage, kind of like the Christmas story. We know the overarching theme. We know kind of what's going on here. To the detriment that sometimes we don't really dive in any deeper. There's a crowd. They're hungry. There's a little bit of food. Jesus performs a miracle. Everyone has enough to eat. But I think there's a lot more to this miracle than just these I think we need to take a step back to appreciate what is really going on. You see in our verses just prior to this gospel lesson, if you were to dig out your Bible and go to that Matthew chapter 14, you'd see a completely different scenario. You'd have a birthday party. And not just any birthday party, it is King Herod's birthday party. Now when I read that passage, I just kind of had this vision of very ornate and extravagant things going on. Perhaps a banquet table filled with the best foods, jars of the finest wine, social elite and people of power all around Herod celebrating his birthday, and Matthew even tells us there's dancing going on. Now, Herod's niece was one of these dancers, and Herod loved her performance so much, he said, I am going to give you whatever you want because you just did such a great job. Now, Jesus' cousin John the Baptist had been preaching and teaching and offering critique against the Roman Empire, and especially Herod. And Herod's niece asks for something rather strange. It's more like a scene from Game of Thrones than anything else. She asks her uncle Herod to have John the Baptist's head on a platter. And Herod complies. He has John the Baptist executed, and his head is brought forth into the party on a platter. And no, I'm not making this up. Directly from this gruesome scene, we move to our gospel lesson. And Jesus hears about this. Jesus hears about his cousin's execution He's moved, I would assume, with grief. And so he seeks to go be alone for a period of time. But then the crowds, the people from the towns, also get news of John's beheading. And if, I'm, if they're like any one of us here today, I'm sure they too are filled with grief and probably quite a bit of anger. Wouldn't you be? Someone that was preaching and teaching and helping advocate for you to have them executed. You'd probably be angry and grief-stricken too. And out of this, Jesus has compassion for the crowds. We might expect Jesus to try and rally the troops and to lead a march up against the Roman Empire, but that's not what Jesus does. Instead of acting out of anger and malice, Jesus acts out of love and grace and mercy. 
He shows us that God's kingdom is not like Herod's kingdom. The kingdom that Jesus is talking about and help usher in is vastly different than any worldly kingdom we have even here today. Because you see, Herod's birthday party is this prototypical party of extravagance, of wanting to hoard power and privilege and to exclude others. And while it may seem like it's full of abundance, it's really a kingdom, a way of life, a culture of fear and not wanting to let others in. Jesus' kingdom is different. Not out of anger, not out of fear does Jesus respond to this, but Jesus responds with love, peace, and compassion. When there wasn't enough food, when they were in a deserted place and felt like, where are they going to go? Jesus says, bring what we have and we'll make do. Out of five loaves and two fish, there was more than enough to go around. In fact, there were leftovers. So as I mentioned earlier, we've been tracing Jesus' greatest hits from the Gospel of Matthew. And so I think here today, this Sunday, at this point in Matthew's Gospel, I think we're at a really crucial point, a pivotal moment for these disciples, if you will. It's as if Jesus has been saying, or is saying, enough of just listening to me talk about the kingdom. Enough of me telling parables about the kingdom. Enough of just thinking about the kingdom. It's time we act upon it. Jesus tells those disciples when they're thinking, we don't have food, we can't feed thousands of people, Jesus. And his response was, they don't need to go away. You. You all. You feed them. You give them something to eat. It's as if Jesus is saying, it's time we all do something about this. It is time that we live the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, here and now. This passage is not just a miracle to be remembered all the way from Sunday and Wednesday school. This passage challenges us here today because I think if we're honest with ourselves, I think we're probably more in that Herod kingdom. We might be invited to that party for Herod and be those that Jesus had compassion for. Because we all probably have enough food. We probably have some power or privilege. In fact, the ELCA is the whitest denomination in the entire United States. There is some power and privilege there. And I think Jesus is saying to those disciples then and all of us here today, it is time we do something about it. It is time we start living into that kingdom. It's time we respond out of compassion and not out of convenience. So it would seem, if we are like those disciples, if we're standing in the shoes of the disciples from the Gospel of Matthew, we're called to obey that almost ridiculous command from Jesus. To trust that what we have is enough and what we have can indeed make a difference. We're called to give of ourselves, whether it's money or possessions, time, skills, talents, whatever it may be, we're called to give of them. Jesus says, you give them something to eat. And if we are going to take God's kingdom seriously, then we need to shift our priorities from being more about Herod's kingdom of greed and selfishness and shift it over to God's kingdom. A kingdom where we have compassion for others, where all are equal, where all are given love and mercy, where we live out our call to be peacemakers. That's what we tell our kids at Noah's Ark Preschool. Last week's text was all about parables about the kingdom, what the kingdom looks like. And here today, Jesus gives us something tangible. 
It looks like meeting people's needs with compassion where they're at. So I wonder, just like our kids' sermon, our kids' message, how are we called to act with compassion? Maybe it's volunteering at the food pantry here. Maybe it's saying black lives do matter. Maybe it's just talking with people who are just completely opposite of us so that we can have a dialogue. Wherever you're called to live out that compassion, know this, that call is there. There's no two ways around it. You are called to be God's hands and feet of compassion, of love and peace. We have to get out of our lazy boys, off our couches, and we need to get to work. Jesus told those disciples back then and us today, they don't need to go away. You give them something to eat. Amen. We now have our hymn of the day, The Church of Christ in Every Age. Church of Christ in every age, beset by change but spirit led, must claim and test his heritage and keep on rising from the dead. Across the world, across the street, the victims of injustice cry for shelter and for bread to eat and never live before they die. For he alone whose blood was shed can cure the fever in our blood and teach us how to share our bread and feed the starving multitude. At this time, we'll invite you to gather that bread and wine or uh, other elements to share in the Lord's Supper. On the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he broke bread and gave it to his friends saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup. Again, he gave thanks and he gave it to all to drink saying, this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new covenant shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. And then he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Friends in Christ, the gifts of God for the people of God. Please share with one another in your home. Hungry folk of air. 
every kind, the poor in body, poor in mind. We come, we come to the hungry feast. We come to the hungry feast, hungry that the Knowing though we eat our fill, the hunger will stay with us still. We come, we come to the hungry feast. Let us pray. God of the welcome table, in this meal we have feasted on your goodness and have been united by your presence among us. Empower us to go forth sustained by these gifts so that we may share your neighborly love with all. Through Jesus Christ, the giver of abundant life. Amen. And now receive the blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our sending hymn is with Andy. Please join in. And now, friends, go in peace to love and share the good news. Thanks be to God. Be strong!